I'll be talking about condyloma acuminatum and common HBV related diseases. Synonyms of condyloma acuminata Verruca acuminata Enogenital warts Venereal warts The abbreviation of HPV H stands for human P stands for papilloma V stands for virus Definition and background Condyloma acuminatum is a benign human papilloma virus induced sexually transmitted disease, which is characterized by epithelial proliferation in the genital region, perianal region, uh, oral cavity, and larynx. It is an epidermal manifestation attributed to Epidermotropic human papilloma virus HPV. Human papilloma virus is a double stranded DNA virus and the most common sexually transmitted infection worldwide, with 9 to 13% of the global population infected. Over 200 types of DSHPV have been isolated and about 40 strains have, have affinity to anogenital sites. HPV infects genital skin and mucosal surfaces to produce wart-like lesions, referred to as condylomet condylometa acuminatum or flat lesions, known as squamous intraepithelial lesions, these are pre-malignant. Medically, the presence of condyloma acuminatum in children raises the suspicion of child abuse. How does HPV spread? HPV spreads typically via skin-to-skin -skin contact during vaginal and anal sexual intercourse. Oral condyloma acuminatum can be caused by oral genital sexual transmission or handed to mouth auto inoculation in adults. It can occur through exchange of fluids such as sperm, blood, and vaginal discharge. HPV can occasionally be transmitted vertically from the mother to child during birth. The incubation period of HPV is three weeks to eight months. Most HPV infections are transient and are eliminated within a 24-month time period by an acute and chronic inflammatory response. Risk factors There are several risk factors for acquiring HPV and the development of cervical intra intraepithelial neoplasia and invasive carcinoma, including early age at first intercourse, multiple sexual partners, intercourse with a partner with HPV disease, a history of other STD sexual transmitted diseases such as chlamydia and gonorrhea infections, sexual promiscuity, smoking, persistent infection by high-risk restraints of papilloma virus, immunosuppression including HIV zero, zero positivity. Types of HPV, low-risk strains, most of the low-risk strains, especially subtypes 6 and 11, are associated with benign proliferative lesions of squamous epithelium. 
हाई रिस्क स्ट्रेंस ऑंकोजेनिक टाइप्स द हाई रिस्क स्ट्रेंस स्पेशली सब टाइप्स सिक्सटीन एंड एटीन कॉज अबाउट फाइव परसेंट ऑफ ऑल कैंसर वर्ल्ड वाइड अदर हाई रिस्क एच पी वी वायरस इंक्लूड थर्टी वन थर्टी थ्री फोर्टी फाइव को इन्फेक्शन बाई लो रिस्क एंड हाई रिस्क स्ट्रेंस कैन ओकेर टाइप सिक्सटीन एंड एटीन could be found as co-infection with human papilloma virus 6 and 11 pathogenesis hpv infection occurs in the most immature and differentiated squamous cells of the basal layer Replic however replication of hpv dna takes place in more differentiated overlying squamous cells a low grade squamous interepithelial lesion lsil hpv is epizomal it means extra chromosomal genome and replicates freely independent of the main host chromosome to create a resistant infection and cause cell death huge numbers of virus must accumulate in the cytoplasm before being visible as a coleocyte in most cases of hsil high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion viral dna integrates into the cell genome protein encoded by hbv 16 e6 and e7 genes they are transforming viral oncoproteins they bind and inactivate p53 and rb protein these are tumor suppressors respectively and mitigate their tumor suppressor functions once the hpv integrates into host dna copies of intact virus do not accumulate and coleocytes are absent in many cases of high grade dysplasia and all invasive cancers basal cells with integrated hpv proliferate as neoblastic clones through the entire epithelium hpv related benign proliferative lesions they include viral warts laryngeal papillomatosis condylomata acuminata 90% of anogenital warts cutaneous hpv viral warts Viral warts are non-cancerous skin growth with a hard surface. There are many types, including common warts, verruca vulgaris, usually affect hands, fingers, and elbows. Plantar warts affect the soles of the feet. Plain warts, verruca plain. Verruca plana or plain warts. These have a flat surface and affect the face, shins, and back of hands. Laryngeal papillomatosis. It is also called recurrent respiratory papillomatosis (RRP). It is a chronic disease caused by infection. with hpv it is characterized by proliferation of non cancerous wart like growth in the airway the disease tends to be recurrent in spite of treatment when rrp occurs in the larynx it is called laryngeal papillomatosis but it can also occur anywhere else in the airway including the trachea and lungs 
The disease may be limited to the larynx, may be extensive. Here, this photo shows extensive tracheal involvement by the human papilloma virus infection, what it means, the warts. High risk HPV associated precancerous disease. High risk subtypes. HPV 16 and 18 are thought to be responsible for 70% of precancerous and cancerous disease. Precancerous disease that is squamous intraepithelial lesions or neoplasia is evidenced by changes in cellularity, differentiation, polarity, nuclear features, and mitotic activity. In other words, disturbances in normal squamous epithelium maturation. Intraepithelial neoplasia is classified by the affected site, including vulvar intraepithelial neoplasia (VIN), cervical intraepithelial neoplasia (CIN), anal intraepithelial neoplasia. AIN, penile intraepithelial neoplasia, PIN, oropharyngeal squamous intraepithelial lesion or uh, called oral leukoplakia, nasopharyngeal squamous intraepithelial lesion. Human papilloma virus related cancers. Human papilloma virus can cause several types of cancer including cervical cancers, ecto and endocervix, approximately 100% associated with, the H with P HPV, all pharyngeal and tonsils cancers, 70%, penile cancers, over 60%, vaginal cancers, 75%, vulvar cancer, 70%, anal cancers, more than 90%, Bounce disease and paranoid papillulosis, carcinoma in situ, lung cancer that arise in smokers about 6%. Clinical presentations. Although HPV is the most common sexually transmitted virus, the virus is symptomless in most individuals and the infection resolves by itself in about 80% to 90%. They can be very painful and itchy and ca can cause bleeding and organ function impairment. Clinical types. It may be external warts, internal warts. The external warts may be single, multiple papules or plugs, flat, verrucous, or bitangulated, reddish or brown, smooth, raised papules, dome shaped lesions on keratinized skin that is keratotic warts. Internal warts. It affects mucous membranes. It is non keratinized warts. Discomfort, pain, bleeding, difficult intercourse. The warts range in size from a small sessile lesion to large papillary proliferation, excrescences, measuring several centimeters in diameter, which sometimes coalesce into a large cauliflower-like mass. Distribution and clinical presentation. Penile lesion of verrucous morphology including the prepuce, glands, coronal sulcus, and urethra. Warts on the inner surface of the prepuce. Here we can see single and multiple warts. 
Liuku plekik genital warts, liuku plekia, these are flat papules with a white surface over the, vo the four skin. Penile meatus. Urethral condyloma can be found in urethral meatus in up to 30% of male patients. Uh, in this photo, urethroscopy shows extensive involvement of the entire penile urethra with condylomata acuminata. Glance penis, head. They appear as verrucous warts with a cauliflower shape or as a reddish erosion. Coronal sulcus. It is the typical localization of genital warts. They appear as multiple genital warts or multiple keratotic genital warts. It may be single or multiple. Penile shaft. These photos shows small soft pink raised round top the papules on the shaft of the penis. Here we can see pigmented cauliflower warts owing to the presence of melanin. In females, condyloma acuminata commonly occur on the vulva. Precancerous changes, vulvar intraepithelial neoplasia and early vulval carcinomas manifest as keratotic warts. Here we can see areas of leukoplakia in the form of whitish patches of epithelial thickening. Vulva and perianal area. Multiple, here we can see multiple keratotic genital warts of the vulva and peri, perineal, perianal area. Here we can see anogenital pigmented genital warts owing to the presence of melanin. Cervix and vagina. Cervical condylomas are most commonly flat but can but may show the appearance of a typical exovitic cauliflower like excrescences. Anal and perianal skin. Here we can see in the perianal area multiple warts. Please note that the funnel shaped of the anus, it means repeated sexual act anal activity. The multiple warts may coalesce forming cauliflower masses. Warts on the upper medial thighs, they appear as cauliflower masses. Intraoral condyloma acuminatum. It can occur due to orogenital sexual transmission or hand to mouth auto inoculation. Here we can see multiple small wart like lesions on the alveolar ridge and palate. Buccal mucosa, lips, tongue, floor of the mouth. A gigantic anogenital lesion called the Bushka Lovenstein tumor. Giant condyloma of Bushka or of Bushka Lovenstein or Bushka Lovenstein tumor. It is a rare sexually transmitted disease with an estimated incidence of about 0.1% in the general population. It is a well differentiated, benign, slow growing cauliflower like tumor. Condylomatosis attributed to HPV 6 and 11 HPV subtypes. It affects anogenital region, 
but unlike simple condyloma acuminata, it is a locally aggressive and destructive lesion. It carries a high recurrence rate and a significant potential for malignant transformation towards squamous cell carcinoma. Its management is often challenging due to the size, rapidly growing, fungating variant, degree of local invasion, and recurrence rate. Radical excision of this endogenital lesion is generally recommended as the first line therapy with clear margin with or without adjuvant chemotherapy and close vigilance and follow up are essential. Giant condyloma of Bushka Lovenstein can occur as a boloboid mass in the rectum. Gross description. It can be large cauliflower mass or papillomatomatous growth. Histopathology. This photo shows a low power, shows a tree-like complex with numerous arborescent condylomatous spiky papillae. The lesions may illustrate keratin pearls. Cytopathic changes associated with human papilloma virus HPV includes include papillary projections coated by stratified squamous epithelium with acanthosis, hyperkeratosis, parakeratosis, and coilocytes. Here we can see papillary projections with the prominent central fibrovascular cores and variables amount of lymphocytes, T cell CD4 positive, coated by stratified squamous epithelium, acanthosis, hyperkeratosis, which means thickened keratin layer, parakeratosis means keratin layer with retained pycnotic nuclei. Coleocytes are characteristic features. It shows a sharply defined base without invasion and preservation of orderly maturation of epithelial cells. Coleocytes uh, <coughs> in the intermediate and superficial layers show wrinkled hyperchromatic resonoid nuclei with a perinuclear clear halo, occasional binucleated cells, and minimal cytologic atibia. This photo show arborescent tree-like complex condylomatous spiky papillae with the prominent central fibrovascular cores. This is the classic pattern of condyloma acuminata, but without evident coilocytosis. So, coilocytosis is not evident in some cases with, other, uh, with otherwise characteristic histological pattern. How, uh, so, the the, the, absence of, uh, the presence of coilocytosis is not essential for the diagnosis of condyloma acuminatum. Subclinical infection. 10 to 20% of infected individuals can not clear their infection effectively and consequentially are at risk for progression of cervical intraepithelial neoplasia to cancer. HBV has a tropism for the immature squamous cells of the transformation zone. Transformation zone is the area where two types of epithelia coexist. Columnar epithelium, which in the endocervix and squamous epithelium, 
which in uh, in uh, ecto cervix subclinical infection cervical intraepithelial neoplasia is asymptomatic is is asymptomatic and comes to clinical attention through an abnormal pap smear this is called a screening test these cases are followed up by colposcopy during which acetic acid 5% is used to highlight the lo the location of lesions and the areas to be biopsied this photo shows a normal squamo columnar junction a smooth and pink squamous epithelium a red columnar uh, columnar epithelium in the endocervix and the smooth and pink squamous in the ectocervix no acetic acid white areas here by using acetic acid 5% we can see early cervical cancer showing oyster shell white with rolled edges <coughs> subclinical infection pap test cervical cancer screening test what will we see after pap tests normal non dysplastic cervical epithelium so the cytopathic changes do not appear low grade squamous intraepithelial lesion lsil they include coelocytic lsil non coelocytic coelocytic and non coelocytic lsil high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion they include cervical intraepithelial neoplasia grade 2 grade 3 and carcinoma in situ cis others including ascus and agus ascus a typical squamous cells of undetermined significance agus a typical glandular cells with, uh, <coughs> with undetermined significance normal non dysplastic cervical epithelium normal cervix shows no mitotic activity above the most basal layers but rather shows epithelial maturation and maintains polarity against the basement membrane with flattening of the cells and progressive diminution of nuclei see the arrowheads low grade squamous intraepithelial lesion roughly 85 percent of lsil lesions have low risk hpv in the cytology coelocytic lsil on cytological examination, the characteristic cellular feature is coelocytosis. It is the cytopathic change characterized by, as we mentioned earlier, by perinuclear cytoplasmic vacuolation, vacuolization and wrinkled nuclear contours resonate uh, shape with altered chromatin density that is a hallmark of HPV infection. Cytologi uh, histologically, condyloma acuminatum, flat type, biopsy of the condyloma shows coelocytotic change in the superficial and intermediate layers of the epithelium. Non coelocytic LSIL. Nuclei are significantly enlarged, significantly enlarged and show mild hyperchromasia and nuclear contour irregularity no definite coelocytotic changes are seen here in histologically mild dysplasia or cervical intraepithelial neoplasia grade one occurs in the lower third of the squamous epithelium mild dysplasia, in mild dysplasia there is 
mild nuclear tibia uh, with the retained maturation and stratification of upper layers. LSIL rarely progresses in severity and commonly disappears. non coelocytic low-grade inter, uh, low squamous intraepithelial lesion with coelocytic LSIL. Low-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion, cervical intraepithelial neoplasia grade 1 is characterized by dysplastic changes in the lower third of squamous epithelium and coelocytotic change in the superficial layers of the epithelium. High grade squamous intraepithelial lesion. Cytologically, they show greater variation in cell and nuclear size, chromatin, heterogeneity, and normal, uh, uh, normal uh, or an abnormal mitosis. Histologically, In cervical interepithelial neoplasia grade 2, it is called also moderate dysplasia. Dysplasia extends to the middle third of the epithelium and takes the form of delayed keratinocyte maturation and disorderly orientation of the cells. The upper layer is retained. Cervical interabicelial neoplasia grade 2 with coelocytosis. As we mentioned earlier, in, in the high grade, the coelocytosis is usually absent, but they can occur together in some cases. Cervical interepithelial neoplasia grade 3, severe dysplasia, shows lack of maturation without differentiation of the basal cells and the presence of full thickness that affects more than two-thirds of the epithelium, keratinocyte, atibia, and disorganization. It is associated with some maturation and stratification of the most superficial layers. Coelocytotic change usually is absent. However, cervical interabicellar nuclear grade 3 can occur with coelocytosis, as in this case. Basal cells are disorganized and extend up, upward to a higher level without differentiation. Coelocytotic change in the superficial layers of the epithelium. A typical mitosis in high grade squamous in high grade squamous uh, intraepithelial lesion indicate an aneuploid genotype seen with high risk viruses. Here we can see horse show multipolar and an equal metaphases are seen. This diagram shows the correlation between, uh, between the cytology and histology and it shows nuclear uh, <coughs> it shows nuclear size, pleomorphism, nuclear and iso, karyocytosis, nuclear hyperchromasia, more mitotic figures increase from low grade squamous intraepithelial lesion to high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion. Immunohistochemistry. P16 immunostaining. It is used in the evaluation of HBV associated enogenital lesions. There are two patterns. Episomal pattern in low risk HPV subtypes. Integrated pattern in high risk HPV subtypes. Episomal pattern of staining. Nuclear and cytoplasmic P16 staining is typically present. 
but is usually focal and confined to the intermediate and superficial layers. See the left photo. It reflects the presence of lower risk HPV subtypes and or, this is most important, high risk subtypes that have not yet integrated into the nuclei of the pr proliferating cells. MIP1, MIB, a proliferation marker staining is confined to the cells in the basal layers. See the right photo. LSILs with integrated high-risk high HPV may show P16 staining in the lower third of the epithelium. A pattern of staining that predicts pro pro progression to an HSIL high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion. Integrated pattern, intense cytoplasmic and nuclear P16. Positivity is typically present within the full thickness of the lesion, or at least within its lower third, consistent with the presence of a high risk HPV. P16 overexpression in high risk HPV lesions can help in the distinction of condylomas from high grade squamous intraepithelial lesions, squamous cell carcinoma in situ. High this photo show high grade cervical inter intraepithelial neoplasia immune staining for P16. There is nuclear staining with minimal staining of cytoplasm throughout all layers. Fluorescence are in cytohybridization fish. Molecular studies in cytohybridization or PCR studies may be used to identify the subtypes, the subtype of the virus. Here we can see the typical episomal pattern, including the cytoplasmic and nuclear. Tip, uh, sorry, this is typical episomal uh, pattern, including only the cytoplasm. Here, typical integrated pattern integration into the nuclei. Comparison of classification systems for precursors of squamous cell carcinoma of the uterine cervix. Squamous intraepithelial lesion besits a system, cervical intraepithelial neoplasia and dysplasia carcinoma in situ. In besits a system, it can be <coughs> low grade squamous intraepithelial lesion and high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion. Squamous, uh, low grade uh, squamous uh, intraepithelial lesion means cervical, uh, histologically means cervical intraepithelial neoplasia grade 1. It means also mild dysplasia. High grade squamous intraepithelial, intraepithelial lesion means, histologically means uh, cervical intraepithelial lesion grade 2 and grade 3. The Cervical intraepithelial <coughs> neoplasia grade 2 means the moderate dysplasia. Uh, cervical intraepithelial grade 3 may be severe dysplasia or carcinoma in situ. Prevention of HPV infection. Condoms reduce the transmission of HPV. However, they do not completely eliminate the risk. HPV vaccination, uh, for example, Garda, Garda cell is recommended to prevent sexually acquired HPV infection and HPV associated diseases, HPV related cancers. It is given during, during childhood be, before the onset of sexual activity. The vaccine does not cure is not used to treat HPV infections or diseases caused by HPV. Treatment and follow-up. 
Condyloma acuminata may regress spontaneously in about 80% to 90%. Recurrence is common and high. HPV cannot be eliminated as it incorporates into the genome of the epithelial cells. It means no cure. It occurs with high risk, high risk uh, HPV subtypes. Treatment is aimed at removal of the lesion by several modalities, including cryotherapy using liquid nitrogen, topical th uh, therapy such as budofilotoxin. It is cytotoxic, so it, is, it should not be used during pregnancy. Or imiquimod cream, this is immune response modifier. Leather treatments, electrocautery, surgical excision. Women with biopsy documented low grade squamous intraepithelial lesion are managed conserv conservatively with careful observation, whereas high grade squamous intraepithelial lesions are treated with surgical excision. Cone biopsy. Follow up smears and clinical examination are mandated for life in patients with high-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion, as these women remain at risk for HBV-associated cervical, vulvar, and vaginal cancers. Surgical excision and skin grafts. This is a case of Bushkel-Lovenstein tumor. The uh, wide excision Radical, wide radical excision on condyloma acuminata. This is dorsal and ventral aspects. The, uh, <coughs> skin graft was done. It is, uh, it is called the double keystone flaps. How is cervical intravicillian neoplasia treated? Treatment depends on various factors, including the severity of SIN. Uh, so CIN, the patient's age and her general medical condition and the preference of the patient and her doctor. Cervical cryotherapy, leap loop electrosurgical excision procedure. It removes a thin layer of surface cells called knife cone biopsy conization. It is reserved for more severe forms of disease. Hysterectomy may be an option in cases where CIN persists. Thank you.